We start this Tuesday edition of the Sportsman Zone by continuing our discussion about the Guyana Cricket Board calling for the resignation of Cricket West Indies Vice President Azim Bazareth. The GCB wrote to CWI President Dr. Kishore Shallow on the 4th of October. In that letter, the Guyana Board indicated they withdrew their Vice Presidential nomination of Bazareth and called the Cricket West Indies election process flawed and illegal. Of course, the CWI elections held March earlier this year. They also issued a 14-day ultimatum for Bazarat's resignation. That ultimatum expires Wednesday. That's tomorrow, the 17th of October. Now, item 92 of the Memorandum and Articles of Association document of Cricket West Indies under the President and Vice President section states, no person shall be eligible for election to the office of president or vice president at any meeting of the members unless not less than 30 days before the date appointed for the meeting of members at which the election of the president or vice president is due to be considered there shall have been left at the office of the secretary of the board of nomination in writing signed by two full members accompanied by a notice in writing signed by the nominee of his willingness to serve if elected quite a mouthful there but to break it all down for us and to help us understand from a legal standpoint is former West Indies youth captain now attorney at law Zaire Ali um, Zaire it's a pleasure to have you on the Sportsman Zone how are you doing well, good evening to you, sir. Good evening to all the stakeholders in West Indies cricket and to my brothers and sisters across the Caribbean. Yeah, absolute pleasure to have you. Quite a mouthful that I just went through um, in terms of the Articles of Association of Cricket West Indies. Can you break that down for us and, and give us your understanding of whether the Guyana Cricket Board is on firm footing with what they are asking of Cricket West Indies and that is for the Vice President to resign and for elections for that position to be reconvened? Well, first, let me put my, my comments into perspective. I am basing my comments this afternoon on the information in the public domain. And um, I must also indicate at the, at the outset that the rights and privileges of the, of the parties involved, um, my comments is not to prejudice any rights that may be available to those parties, including the access to court if it reaches that far. But however, this afternoon, I'd just like to look at it in the context where um, there is, in fact, a dispute, and a dispute that has been around for some time. Um, so along those lines, I'll be looking to, to traverse this afternoon with your assistance. Yeah. Can you break down for us your understanding of the situation and whether the, the GCB is on firm footing with what they're asking of Cricket West Indies, which is for the vice president, as in Bazarath, to resign and for new elections for that position to be reconvened? Well, when you look at that Rule 92 that you just read from the Articles of Incorporation, the Memorandum of, and the bylaws of that particular Cricket West Indies, it's very, very... Um, strict in terms of what is required to be done in terms of the nomination of an individual. Um, what we are seeing in that particular um, provision, or what I would like to share or suggest is that one needs to now look at the spirit and intent of that 92 in the context where it's definitely um, demonstrating the need for notice to be given early um, for whatever administrative um, requirements that has to be carried out. So. What we are not seeing in the rules, from my um, humble review, is um, the, the rule that governs a withdrawal. So that takes me to the point that when there's a dispute, um, in terms of a, a dispute um, in this particular instance, the question is, what should be the approach or what should be the suggested approach if, in fact, the Articles of Incorporation or the Bylaws of Cricket West Indies may appear to be silent on that particular issue? So I'm not going to pronounce on it conclusively as to whether, in fact, um, the, the Guyana Cricket Board had strength in their case or whether, in fact, Cricket West Indies is right um, to stand by their position. But what I would like to see coming out of this is whether, in fact, we are using Cricket West Indies processes um, to really have an expeditious and amicable resolution to this matter, which has been for some time. And having said that, may I just share with you that um, 
the, there are particular rules in the Cricket West Indies um, bylaws that speaks about that the power of the Cricket West Indies to hear and determine a matter to amend and repeal the, the, the rules if in fact there's a there's silence in this particular area or to take any lawful action to resolve this matter. So I am taking the, the line of whether in fact at this stage, whether we can suffi sufficiently say without prejudice to any party, whether we have exhausted the remedies that are available within the framework of Cricket West Indies. Okay. What would you suggest are some of those re remedies? Well, when you look at Cricket West Indies um, bylaws, um, what you're seeing clearly is that there's room for, and I don't know whether in fact, um, I say I'm basing my, my, my comments on the public information in the public domain, but I do not know whether in fact there was a properly constituted special meeting by the, the, the members or the slash the shareholders of West Indies Cricket to properly debate this particular issue and have a general consensus. So you have all the other members having an opportunity to comment on this matter. So that's number one. And when we speak about that special meeting, may I say as well that we also have to be very cautious in terms of the subject, which is the vice president um, issue. In terms of that special meeting, good sense needs to prevail as well to ensure that there's integrity in the discussion. So that's number one. Number two, there's also a built-in alternate dispute resolution in the Articles of Incorporation and the bylaws, which gives us, and gives us, meaning Cricket West Indies, the opportunity to look at arbitration. So one will want to be exploring the remedies that are available within the framework so that there's full and frank disclosure, there's transparency, and the actions are taken towards good governance um, in, in West Indies cricket. Yeah, and Zahir, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, CWI president, he came out and he was one of the voices that said, of course, the process was done in a legal, fair, transparent manner. We also heard from the BCCI. They also said that. Do you think that those two voices coming to the forefront, those people are reputable where CWI cricket is concerned, uh, the whole esteemed positions, does their voices hold any weight in this matter? Well, definitely. When you have the president of the, West, the Cricket West Indies speaking and then you have the Guyana Cricket Board also responding, we have to you know, respect these authorities, Guyana Cricket Board being a, 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 a member, a stakeholder, a shareholder of West Indies Cricket. And by extension, we have the chair, which is the president. So we have to respect the positions that are coming um, and meeting each other. But what we require, in my respectful view, is that there, it is clear that there's a dispute thus far based on the public information. So the question is, how do we go forward? Do we do we um, the, do the parties hold their side in, in, in it strictly or should we and that's the point I'm making is that are we really exploring the internal framework or even if using the internal framework to say, OK, let's appoint an arbitrator or two arbitrators to look at this issue conclusively so that you'll have the stakeholders in West Indies cricket more receptive to such an approach as opposed to both parties just holding a position and arguing on that basis. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You're saying, you know, out of court settlement might be easier where the way going forward is concerned because it's not as hostile as if you are to go to court. Court matters tend to take some time and it can also create a rift within the Cricket West Indies organization. Is that? Well, I'm happy that you went there and hence why I, I, I opened by indicating that my comments is not geared towards prejudice and any rights that may be available to the parties, including um, going to the court if need be. But what I'm saying is that um, is port we are speaking about. And we already have um, the need to look at rebuilding West Indies cricket. So could you imagine that instead of focusing on building West Indies cricket and actual cricket and investing in cricket, that now we have now to entertain litigation. And hence I'm saying that there must be some level of maturity um, and the actions taken by Cricket West, when cricket West Indies are not um, omitting the Ghana Cricket Board must all get to what's the best interest of West Indies cricket. And hence why I'm going back again by identifying in my respectful view, I don't feel that we have already used the avenues that are available internally to at least give us the best opportunity um, to resolve this matter. And if that fails, well, then I can understand that we are thinking litigation. But I don't feel that we have exhausted, in my respectful view, um, all the avenues to resolve this matter. Yeah, so here, just to get a clear understanding, whose responsibility is it to lead that process in terms of exhausting all the available um, resources or guidelines within the organization? Because let's say 
you are the Guyana Cricket Board and you're not hearing from Cricket West Indies what you would like, um, then it would make sense that we would end where we are right now, which is the Guyana Cricket Board threatening legal action. Well, again, excellent, excellent question. Um, we have the option for a special general meeting with three full members requesting that meeting. Mm. So if we are looking at a particular dispute between the Guyana Cricket Board and, um, and the issue in relation to the appointment of the vice president, yeah. the other members, the other stakeholders need to recognize where their power, or where their authority may lie to assist in resolving this matter. So if three full members um, request a special general meeting with an identified agenda, and this matter is debated and a decision is taken by Cricket West Indies, one can now start up, okay, that we are now utilizing the highest authority of Cricket West Indies to be able to debate and, and, and ventilate this matter. So that is one angle we can take. And I may also say that the president, by virtue of his authority, can also um, request a special general meeting. The question is whether, in fact, he may want to have on board the vice president or, um, for this purpose, move a resolution to be able to debate the matter um, conclusively, or we may also consider having the vice president be present to, to be heard in the proceedings. So there are many different um, contexts that we can look at it, but within the rules, there is the option for a special general meeting to really look at this particular issue. And especially if we are the parties are looking at the rules that exist where you have rule 92, but one may argue, okay, is it silent in terms of withdrawal? When can a withdrawal be made? And, and those sort of issues. So that resolution may be geared towards resolving the matter or even looking to take corrective action to amend the rules so that this does not reoccur in the future. So we need to be mature. And again, we, we must not omit to use, and I keep harping on this point, the built-in alternate dispute resolution methods within Cricket West Indies. It is bigger than an individual. It is bigger than a board. I need to see what's in the best interest of West Indies cricket and to avoid any unnecessary litigation in this process, in these proceedings. Yeah, well, Sahir, you've been involved in West Indies cricket for a long time as, as a player. And you understand the toxic nature of some of these um, contentious issues in West Indies cricket. Uh, in the past 10 minutes that you've been on or so, I've heard you use the word mature at least three times with regard to the stakeholders approaching this thing in a, in a mature manner. And just to follow up on the answer that you just gave, um, isn't it that the GCB feels as if they are being ignored here on this issue, which is why they have gone a legal route or threatening a legal route because my understanding is that since March they have been asking for this issue to be addressed. So the ball does appear to be in the court of the CWI to, to exercise these internal um, approaches that you just spoke of and, um, and, 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 and deal with this matter instead of what appears for, on the outside to us to be the GCB being ignored. Well... What, what, when we look at this particular situation, it is quite clear that the Guyana Cricket Board is actually, from there, is actually invoking the board for a discussion. But just writing the, the, the Cricket Board, in my view, asking for the resignation of the Vice President, um, while they may be right and well inclined to, make, to, to ask for such a, um, a, a response, let's look at it in the bigger picture where if, in fact, there's a dispute, the question is, where are the other members, the full members of West Indies Cricket Board, of the Cricket West Indies? What are, their, what are their views? What are their purpose? Are they really promoting good governance by remaining silent? So the rules was, was, was structured to give other parties who may have the answer to say, okay, let's move a meeting and debate this issue. So it's not one individual or one shareholder or one member that should be now in this debate, but it should bring in the shareholders and bring in the directors to use the rules so that we won't only have a correspondence going to the Cricket West Indies demanding a particular response, but Cricket West Indies themselves are looking at, say, okay, what can we offer to you? Should we move into a special general meeting? You will have the opportunity to debate it. Other persons will have their perspective, and we use the board processes to look at it, and if then you still do not agree, well, then we can, you know, revert to your other legal recourse, but we see a very strong position taken by the Guyana Cricket Board, and as I say, we cannot be prejudicial to them. They have chosen that part. We have to respect that. But I'm going back to Cricket West Indies that we need to, to use the rules of the board, and I'm not seeing that, and I'm humbly asking any best interest of West Indies cricket, let us explore and use the rules properly 
to be able to solve and resolve this dispute. Yeah, on a point of clarity, to use the rules, you're beseeching for the, the rules to be used. This is coming from Cricket West Indies. The, Cricket West Indies has to invoke this. Well, we, ha we have, as I get, I gave two options a while ago. The chairman, yes. as president, can invoke a special general yes. meeting because there's an issue at hand. And secondly, in the absence of him, three members, three full members of the Cricket West Indies can in ask for a special general meeting. So the question is, the issue is now tabling this matter properly so that it can be properly ventilated. And then um, all stakeholders now can be given a feedback as to what transpired in the meeting and what the board decided, as opposed to with hearing, you know, Cricket West Indies standing by the vice president and probably right, um, that probably their perspective and Guyana Cricket Board is asking for the resignation. So my question is, the Cricket West Indies and the president, by extension, respectfully, they are not the only members of the, of the board. There are other members. For example, we have Barbados, we have Jamaica, we have the Leeward Islands, we have the Windward Islands. So the question is, if we are really serious about moving West Indies cricket and, and resolving this dispute, then one may ask, okay, where are these stakeholders in the, in the proceedings? Yeah. So, so here, I just want to be clear before we close out here that essentially what you are saying, no issues with the Guyana Cricket Board writing to Cricket West Indies, but for the first step to speak about the resignation of the vice president and litigation, that maybe there were other options or there are other options available to them before they got there. And those are the options that they probably should have and could have explored in the letter to Cricket West Indies. Am I correct in saying that? Well, I, I do not want to, to, to be prejudicial to the position that they have taken by writing the Cricket Board and asking for a response in terms of the resignation. But what I'm saying is that having written to the Cricket West Indies as the authority, what one may have anticipated is Cricket West Indies looking at the letter and let us have some amicable uh, correspondence as to, okay, maybe let me offer an alternative. But what we are seeing in this particular context, so from the, from the public domain, I'm not, I'm not seeing the opportunity to have further dialogue and meaningful dialogue within the rules of the board. So hence why I'm saying that is it if we, as we speak, if there was a, the, the, the constitution of a special general meeting and it's debated, then we have other variables in the board to look at. But at this time, it's just a letter from the Guyana Cricket Board asking for a particular response from Cricket West Indies. And on the other hand, we're hearing, okay, that they're standing by their position, but have we really used the rules to resolve the matter? So that's the, that's the issue I'm actually tabling this afternoon. Yeah, completely understands it here. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens within the next 24 hours. The ultimatum by the Guyana Cricket Board expiring on Wednesday. That's the 17th of October. That is tomorrow. Zaire, we appreciate your input on the show today. And I'm sure that we'll be reaching out to you again um, to have a few more conversations around West Indies cricket. Thank you very much for the opportunity to comment. And as I said, in, as I open. My comments was not geared towards prejudice in any of the rights that may be available, but looking at what's in the best interest of West Indies cricket. Yes, yeah, Zaire Ali there, former West Indies youth captain. And I tell you something, if you've ever seen Zaire Ali bat um, for a second, you might think you were watching Brian Charles Lara. He <laughs> had a Brian Charles Lara style. I'll never forget it. I was 11 years old and I saw him playing for Trinidad and Tobago at Sabina Park against Jamaica. It was the red stripe ball at the time. And uh, yeah didn't he look like the charles wasn't the charles but aesthetically he looked like him we take a break we'll be back with more on the sports mag zone <laughs>